I don't know about you, but I thought it was pretty darn exciting to learn about physical geography and those sciency processes that make Earth what it is. It gives us our home and sets the stage for human beings on the Earth. But an empty stage without actors makes for a pretty boring play. Unless it's Music Man. Nothing could ruin Muse McMahon. As beautiful and amazing as the Earth is, we'd never enjoy it if we weren't here too. Here's something to give you nightmares. Without humans, there would be no geography. <coughs> that wouldn't be our only problem, but still. But human beings are here, and we are an essential ingredient to geography. That is why the other side of the geography coin is human geography. Human geography explains different groups of human beings that live on the planet and how they relate to one another. Basically, we're all cousins, which makes dating kind of awkward. Where physical geography looks at physical sciences, human geography looks at social sciences. Things like sociology, economics, history, and political science to explain the groups of people on planet Earth. And there's a lot of people to study. As of today, there are more than seven and a half billion human beings spread out over the world. These people comprise over 5,000 different ethnic groups, more than 7,000 different languages, 195 countries recognized by the United Nations. And one person that owes me $20. I haven't forgotten Jim. Mm -mm. So yeah, human geography is no small science. You could study it every day of your life and still not know everything about people on this planet. But that's not gonna stop us from trying. Among all of these different groups, languages, and countries, there is interaction. Groups of people who live among one another live with each other communicate with one another, work together, and sometimes, unfortunately, come into conflict with one another. Looking at you, Jim. Human geography gives us tools for identifying who these groups of people are, where they live, and different and unique characteristics about these groups. Like physical geography, human geography can be broken down into some specific areas. Because human geography is based on groups of human beings, Population geography tells us how many people live in which part of the world. Can you tell us about population geography? Sure thing. First of all, population geographers do a lot of counting. Counting people, that is. They answer key questions that are a huge part of human geography. How many people and where are the people? Population geography also looks at how those numbers change. It tells us where numbers of people are growing and where they're getting smaller. It helps us know how many new babies are born in a group of people each year and how many people die each year. Population geography teaches us about how people move around. This includes migration, when an individual or group of people moves from one place to another. And it helps us understand the differences among groups of people who live in cities, urban geography, and in the countryside, rural geography. All this is why population geography is the best field of geography. The next, and perhaps the best known way of classifying the world, comes through political geography. What can you tell us here? Political geography, which is way better than population geography, by the way, identifies the different governments in the world. It tells us who rules the people and where they rule the people. Political geography is what identifies all the different countries of the world. It can look at countries as a whole or at interactions between different countries. This is called international relations. Or it can break down countries into smaller pieces, like states, provinces, cities, and towns, and help us understand more about them. I'd like to see population geography do something like that. So far, we have population geography, counting the people and where they are, and political geography, which helps to give names to those places based on governments that control them. And just to reiterate, neither is more important than the other. But within these countries and populations, not everybody is the same. There are different groups of people that are distinct from one another in unique ways. 
One part of human geography that helps to look at this is called cultural geography. Thanks! Rather than identifying people by physical space or political control the way dumb dumb fields of geography do, we, culture geographers, identify groups of people based on similarities in their culture. Culture is what makes any group of people unique. Often, culture geography will look at certain cultural products of specific groups. Examples of cultural products include language, religion, customs and traditions, methods of social organization, such as what families look like or social classes within a society, as well as forms of artistic expression, like music, art, and literature. All of these things and more, when added together, help to create specific cultural groups in the world. It's impossible to number how many distinct cultural groups there are in the world, but cultural geography helps us learn about as many as we can. Isn't that cooler than what you heard from the other hosts? Thank you. That is equally cool to what I heard from the other host. In our world, these different people, countries, and cultural groups interact with one another. One of the most common ways they do this is through economics. And economic geography is the part of human geography that looks at this. And before I pass it off, remember that this is not a competition. Did someone say competition? No! Economic geography, or what we in the biz call geography for smart people, studies money, trade, business, and economic activity of all kinds throughout the world. It looks at many things that lame geography doesn't even care about, like industry, what kind of activities do people do to make money in their countries? Like agriculture, how do people feed themselves? Where do they get their food? Like international trade between countries, what are countries buying and selling with other countries? Like transportation and communication, how do people get themselves and the things that they create from one place to another? How do they communicate with people far away from them? Like resources. What kinds of things are found in the land? What can be done with these things? What knowledge, education, or skills do people have in a place? And how can they be used? And development. Are people in a specific area able to afford a standard of living that is higher or lower than people in other places? So yeah, I guess you can say we're the only field of human geography that actually matters. When looked at together, population, political, cultural, and economic geography all can tell us a lot about demographics. Demographics are those main identities and characteristics that we use to define and describe specific groups of people. Demographics include things such as ethnic groups, religious groups, and languages that are spoken, education levels, types of work, how much money a person makes, and more. These are the four main areas of human geography that we will discuss, but there are a few others that should be considered too. While it's important to understand the human geography of today, it's also useful to understand what people and groups were like in the past so that we know how they became like they are today. Historical geography looks at this. Actually, we have someone from ancient Greece to tell us a little bit about that. Χρησιάστε όλο που είπαν, αυτοί οι βλάχες. Επάρχει μόνο ένα, αλήθινο τύπο γεωγραφίες, ιστορικής γεωγραφίες. Ακόντως αυτούς του τελίτιος, άλλος μεσολαβήτες, σημαίνει ότι είστε πίθινος ελίτιος εσύ, επίσης. Never mind. Human beings are ultimately physical beings and we get sick, get hurt, and eventually die. How does this world impact this? How does the place we live make a difference in our health? Health geography looks at these questions. Human diseases don't care about culture, governments, or economies. It's something that affects us all. Whew! There you have it. You're a human. And now you know something about human geography. I'll bet you never realized you were so special. Hey everyone, I'm Niels with Engage Global Storytelling. Thanks so much for joining us on the journey of geography. And guess what? At Engage Global Storytelling, our goal is to 
teach the whole world about the world. You know, we're pretty focused. But that means you. So keep coming back and you can learn more about geography, you can learn more about countries, you can learn more about cultures, you can learn more 